Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gold Standard with Alan Mosley, and here's your host for the hour, Alan Mosley. Thank you for joining us again here at the Gold Standard that uh, we just had a little bit of a technical difficulty where we thought we were recording, but we weren't. But it's not like we did like an hour episode and then said, oh, shoot, it was just it was just a few minutes. But uh, I'm not going to repeat everything word for word, but I just want to let you know as the viewer what you missed. You missed yes. you missed an American Pie reference that had to do with flutes. Man, we should have set that up. <laughs> I wish y'all could have heard that. That was no, good. No, no, no. Oh, no that, that wasn't that's, good. That's, a, that's exactly the kind of thing. That's, that's why we weren't recording. Yeah. Remember, remember how I said before the show that we're just, we're just going to transform into a different show that's going to yeah. be the gold standard after dark. And it's going to be 18 plus. <laughs> it, it, it almost happened naturally. It almost happened. Right there. Right there. Right, yeah. But you're so, glad you missed it trust me it wasn't worth it okay Woo! but this time yes. we're on track so here okay. you go brother okay Take so it away. <laughs> so what I, what i wanted to start with the show really quick with before we get into our our serious topics mm-hmm. uh for today was I, I wanted to take a few moments to comment on the head coaching search for the university of Ten- tennessee football Ooh. team yes uh and and I know that viewers in different parts of the country are either going to say, "What are you talking about?" or cares. or or right. yeah, I saw something about that on ESPN. You're all insane. Yeah. That's yes. basically the. But gist we of are it. in Tennessee, so yeah. But it, yeah, but it's a football part of the country. Yes. Uh, and and the reason I wanted to bring it up is, of course, as a football fan, you know, of course, we want to see winning football and, and sure, f- and this absolutely, fo- yeah, and all that. But but to tie it in more to the to the aspect of of the topics of our show. You know the UT football program, you know, generates like a hundred million dollars a yeah, year. A lot. So yeah. So it's so if you if you looked at it as a business as opposed to like a function of a state university, it would be a very wealthy business that yeah. generates a lot Big of time. income. Yeah. And so by that logic, it it is absolutely very important who they hire to run that organization. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and and really just big football in general. And and I had made the comment uh, before the show that, you know, a lot of people kind of get up in arms that, well, you know, there shouldn't be that much money in football and it should be about the students and their education and, and, and college atmosphere and it's not supposed to be about football. And, and I would say, well, I, I get what you're saying, but – it's it's a different situation when you're talking about a hundred million dollar organization. Yeah, it just it it's just a lot of is. Money. It just is. That's just life. Um, so it is important, and I think people have every right to be invested in it, especially because it is tied to a state university. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of pride in Tennessee yeah. that surrounds UT. You know, yeah. so if UT's doing great, hey, we're all doing great. If UT's not doing so great, you got a lot of depressed cats around here. Last last night, uh, there was somebody on Twitter, and I and I brought that up about Twitter too. Is that you know your 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 trending now section may uh-huh. be different depending on what you subscribe to in different parts of the country. Sure. I don't know about you, but in our neck of the woods, like <laughs> like half of my trending now is UT, the athletic director, the yeah. chancellor, two or three rumored coaches. Like right. half of half right. of the news going on yeah. is the UT head coach. So who search. are they looking at now? Like who's the main guy? Do you remember? <sighs> Well, I, I mean, I sent him my resume for oh, sure. Oh, you did? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, dude, it should because, be you, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, I mean really? Look I mean, well, guy. you look at you look at. Well, last year they went like. I mean, this past season because they're done because they right. went four and eight. So that's not a bowl game. No. I mean, I could have a losing season and not go to a bowl <laughs> game. I could do that for sure. You can I mean, mail if that's that. That's all in. it takes to be the yes. coach. Then hey, sign me up. If that know? gets me like ten million a year, yes. Even I if could, it was just for one year, yes. you could fire me after that's over. We'll be all yes. right. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I was talking to a buddy of mine last night, and I said that I'm afraid that if even if they did give us a chance to take the job, we're not going to have one of these cushy contracts where they have to buy us out when they right. want to fire us, and they right. have to. No, that, we're going to have a clause in our contract that says <laughs> your your buyout's like a dollar. <laughs> Just get out of here, clean out your desk. Uh, wow. No, there. I I if I had to guess, and and you know what sucks about doing a show like in the middle of the day, like we're doing here. Is they they may have just like announced who the new coach is, right? And, and we don't even you, know. And when you see this, they're like, "What an idiot!" But yeah. oh, well. I I think it's going to be Jeremy Pruitt, who is the defensive coordinator of Alabama right uh-huh. now. Okay. Uh, I think that's, as of the taping of this show. as of the taping of the right. show, I think he's going to become the new head coach of Tennessee, and I think that they're making a concerted effort to bring in some people with former ties to the university right. to fill out the rest of the staff, which is good. I like yeah, that. Sure. Make it a family organization. 
Uh, I think that's who it's going to be. I and, and if if I had to guess, I'd say he's probably you know he's probably making like a million bucks a year at Alabama to be the defensive coordinator. He's probably if if he does get the job, he's going to get like a three or four or five million dollar raise per year yeah. to take on this job. And and it's a huge job. Yeah, sure. And they work around the clock, so yeah. I mean it is a lot of work. Right. But yeah, he's he's about to make some money. Yeah. He's okay. about to, he's about to make some money. Well, good luck to him. Hope he gets it. Sure. Eh, why not? I don't. What do I know? I don't <laughs> know, know any. Yeah. yeah. So, so this anyway, is not a sports show. <clears throat> no, it's and we not. don't know much about it. So, well, well hey, hey, hey. You, well, you, you do. I, I, I don't. I do. I, I do love me some football. You do love you some. But football. all. But all I can say in response to that is, is that if if UT doesn't hurry up and figure out a way to fix their football program, we're very. First of all, UT is just going to become a basketball school because wow. the UT men and women are both having a good start yeah. to the season. Yeah. So we'll just forget football even exists. <laughs> and 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 even to drive that point further home, how are we talking about football when this is really a hockey state? Because that is true. Because of Smashville and, and, and the Predators. That's right. So. Yeah, so if anybody's been keeping up with the Nashville Predators, I'm a lot more yeah. go Preds. You know, but bet- <laughs> between between the the kind of meh Titans and in mm-hmm. UT having like a decade of of <laughs> being somewhat irrelevant, meh is giving him a little too much. Meh, money. meh, yeah, meh. So anyway, to to get back to our to our serious topics, because we I could sit here and talk about sports yeah. all day, but it's. I, I, when you're, especially when you're a fan of a team that's not doing well, it's not so much that you're discussing sports as uh-huh. you're just lamenting. Yeah, you're just eh, eh. lament on, brother. Yeah, lament on. So anyway, I wanted to start off this episode uh, talking a little bit about the uh, the follies of the drug war. I actually have on my on my little show notes page. There's drug war follies, and then there's more drug war follies. So we're going to start off with with drug war follies number one. Drug war follies. This is one of your hashtag not the onion articles right okay. here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this this was from about a week or so ago now. Uh, Detroit police officers fight each other in undercover op gone wrong. So right off the bat, you already know this is a winner. This is absolutely a winner. This was by Taryn Asher. Uh, this was a uh, Fox Two in the Detroit area, uh, WJBK. Oh, so there you go. Okay, yeah, we're almost like a professional almost show. Or That's here, right. Yeah. Uh, so an internal investigation has been launched at the Detroit Police Department after two different precincts got into a turf war as they converged on an East Side neighborhood. <laughs> Now let me let me explain to you what happened here so that you understand how the police are getting into a turf war in the oh. in in the drug business. So there was a sting operation where there was there was going to be a fake drug sale was okay, going to be sure. orchestrated. Mm-hmm. Where, We've all seen that on TV. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Where you you know how it is is that you you go up to say say you're posing as a buyer and sure. you're going up to buy drugs and right. when they actually produce the drugs to sell to you then that's when you whip out the badge and say uh-huh. free and scumbag and, in, and yeah, it. yeah and, and yeah, they get them really and they and they yeah. and they're wearing wires and they've got them oh, on yeah. tape and all that stuff. Um, the the where it went awry this time is that when they pulled out their guns and said free scumbag. The drug sellers also pulled out their guns and said, free scumbag, because the drug sellers were a different group of Detroit police officers that were conducting their own sting operation. Wow. So they stung each other. <laughs> And and on and, and on, all the drug dealers are standing on the other court. Go, you dummies! Don't you, don't you know for sure? Don't you know oh, that man. in this in this in this side uh, on oh, it was man. on the east side of Detroit? Don't you realize that there were probably genuine like gangbangers down uh-huh. the street laughing who saw this, and so they know for one, hey, better watch out. They're on to us in this area because in in two, they done arrested each other. Yeah, they've done arrested each other. So it's oh. Uh, I mean, it, I, okay, okay. Look, look. You know, there's there's definitely a miscommunication problem with law enforcement, and and in that situation, it's blatant. Okay, when you're doing a sting, you would think that one person would say, "Hey, we're doing a sting to the other guy," and then that way they would know, "Hey, stay out of this neighborhood because we're playing the opposite of what you're doing." But what happened is the two of them, well, they kind of came together on the same street, and it ended badly. It even says right here, sources say guns were drawn and punches were thrown while homeowners nearby stood and watched. 
<laughs> well, first of all, just as a really, really quick, serious aside, can you imagine how much bigger of a national scandal this would be if they actually started shooting at each other? Yeah. Like, holy yeah, crap. Yeah, that could have been bad. Well, because obviously, naturally, each side is thinking the other side is 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 lying, and and we've got to take these these guys down. And, you, and it makes both... you wonder, you know, when the one guy pulled out the gun, and they, Dave, Rob, hey, funny to see you here, man. What are you selling drugs for? What are you buying for? <laughs> well, and of course, and of course, so many, so many different, uh, so many different precincts now are into the body cameras now yeah. to to hold. Police. That's got to be and, hysterical. And hold everybody accountable. So they do have body camera footage yeah. of this whole thing taking place, <laughs> and so it's just a it's just a big uh, when you internal like to be a affairs fly on the wall in that Christmas yeah, party, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's just a big <laughs> eternal affairs nightmare, and yep. and yeah. So <clears throat> you know that story in of itself is just insane. Like it's it's just ridiculous to even to even fathom yeah. that that. But it also uh, kind of belies. A bigger issue, which is, we we've got to end the war on drugs. Like the the war on drugs yeah. clearly isn't working. Um, it's 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 a triple whammy, really. Of uh, you know, for one, its stated purpose of getting drugs off the street and lowering you know addiction rates that is not working. That no, is, right. I mean, that's clearly that's... if they can't keep drugs out of prisons, they're not going to keep drugs off of the streets. Exactly. Uh, so for for one, just for its own stated purpose, that's not. That's not working. No, um, it's costing more than it should. Yeah, you know, in terms of people in prison, you know, being arrested for very minor violations, spending yeah. weeks of their lives. And I'll tell you, when you when you go to jail, everything changes. It's not just you going to jail. You lose your job. You mm -hmm. lose your credit. You lose your car. You lose your house. You lose everything you own is gone. And you're lucky if you got a family to back you. So I mean, mm -hmm. just having a little ounce of pot in a bag isn't going to kill the world. I mean, you know, and mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I don't want to say I'm a huge advocate for, you know, for for doing drugs cuz I'm certainly not. But the whole pot thing, yeah. I mean, yeah. alcohol, pot, I see more damage being done in the world from one than the other. You know, I'm just saying. <clears throat> that reminds me of one of my favorite uh me and other me, Kermit the Frog memes of uh -huh. of the one me says that if I if I'm going to a family reunion, you know, let's not talk about libertarian politics. Let's just enjoy a good fun time. And the other me says, no, let's talk about recreational heroin. <laughs> <laughs> so, heroin well, is dangerous now. So I mean, so so the point being is that one from a, from a practical standpoint, it doesn't work. Right. Two, from a moral standpoint, if you believe in self ownership. Then you believe that a person has the right to do with their own body what they see fit, right? And as so long we, as it doesn't cause damage it's, it's, to yeah, others. Yeah, exactly. So you so you can't tell people mm -hmm. what they can and can't do with their body, right. what they put in. Well, I mean, their I I think that drug addiction is more of a social, medical, psychological side mm -hmm. of things, not so much a legal, law enforcement, criminal thing. It's the fact that it's against the law. <clears throat> excuse me, that makes it all that. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's a sad thing when someone is horribly addicted to a drug that they can't break free of, and regardless of the circumstances that got them there, what matters is they need help, they need love, mm -hmm. they need support, and they need encouragement. And the one thing that cures that more than anything is giving these people a reason within themselves to understand this, if they have a reason to live, to exist. That's really at the core of it. It's more well, of a psychological thing. I'm not even addicted to drugs, but I kind of like all those things. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> so, so, so three. So, practical standpoint, it doesn't work. Right. Uh, moral standpoint, it's immoral to tell people what to do if they're not right. hurting someone else. And then, and then the the socioeconomic standpoint of uh, kind of tying into this story is so we funnel more and more and more money into programs, into police departments. Right. Uh, into into federal organizations to combat and police and regulate drugs, and the argument I would make is is that one of the reasons why government doesn't work, and and, and, in, and in this case especially, is when when you are running a department and you are submitting a budget because you want X amount of money so that you can pay yourself and pay your public employees right. or what have you, it doesn't behoove you to solve the problem. Because if you solved a problem, then your department would be shuttered <laughs> right. and you'd be out of a job. I can so, see how that kind of works. So it doesn't so that's that's one of the biggest issues with any problem that government tries to tackle is that the it's all it's all about incentives. And the incentives for them is not really to <clears throat> 
to end drug use and be sunshine and rainbows. Their incentive is to always be getting a bigger budget with more money and more toys and, and more bonuses to continue doing their job. So continuing doing their job means fighting the drug war forever. And, and that's ridiculous. Propagating it. Yeah, keeping it's it, exactly. Sustaining it so that it is... You got your bad guys always there, and you got your good guys always getting yes. paid to fight it. Yes. You know, yeah. well, that's... <clears throat> yes. That's I guess that's incorrect economics. Incorrect economics. That's what we should have named the show. <laughs> it's going to be incorrect economics with Alan Musk. <laughs> So anyway, wow, <laughs> uh, and that that moves us to story number two, and and I just I just can't help but notice that they say there's there's a breaking news tab. This is this story is actually coming from Tracy Tong of, of USA Today, uh, but I just can't help but notice that there's a breaking news tab at the top, and it's saying something about Al Franken. He's he will announce plans following Democratic calls for resignation. Does that mean he's resigning? I don't know. I can't see the this, rest of it because this, this computer blocks off that side of the. Oh, this <laughs> go to the bottom of our slide. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna come back. You know what? This is this is this is what's awesome about doing like uh-huh. like recording <laughs> recording live is that this is yeah. one of those things where this you is going this is, this might be a hot take. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. And and if there's one thing that we're not known for, it's hot takes. <laughs> But we're going to come back. You know, this is darn you USA Today website. I have to click on that link after we after yeah. we address the story because okay. we're not done with drug war follies. No, uh, this is drug war follies part two. Yes, okay. So the U.S. Coast Guard is o- operating secret floating <laughs> prisons in the Pacific Ocean. Really? That is just what I was thinking we needed, is yeah. more secret prisons off the coast of the, of the ocean. That's yeah, do awesome. They, do they gamble on those boats, too? Well, I mean, I do. <laughs> that's the sh- uh. So the war on drugs, in the war on drugs, the U.S. Coast Guard is reportedly turning its cutter ships into floating prisons. Uh, of course, everybody knows about the war on terror. We know about Guantanamo Bay, which also sure. should be closed. Um and the the idea there is is that it it allows the United States an opportunity to have a prison outside the jurisdiction of the U.S. justice system, uh, which I mean that if if that just just like Orwellian have written all over it, I don't know what does, but that's why they do it. Yeah. And so now they're they're upping the ante on that concept. And then, and then kind of comparing that to the drug war. So there's secret U.S. detention system in the war on drugs as well, not just the war on terror. And it's aboard U.S. Coast Guard cutters sailing in the Pacific Ocean. In an effort to staunch the flow of cocaine, I like that, to staunch, staunch. the flow. Yeah, staunch the flow of cocaine. And other hard drugs from South America to Central America and points north, Coast Guard cutters have been deployed farther and farther from the shore in the Pacific Ocean. When these cutters capture a boat carrying drugs, the smugglers are brought onto the ships and kept shackled to the deck, sometimes outside in the elements, until the Coast Guard makes arrangements for them to be transported back to the U.S. for trial. Uh, wow. I mean, so so these are these are technically international criminals. Yeah, so they're out in international waters, or are they in American waters? When they enter American waters, I suppose. I know you're a busy guy. I don't know how much time you have to watch anything on Netflix. Have you seen on Netflix the show Narcos? Narcos. Narcos. I have not seen Narcos. Narcos, I I just got done. I think there's only two seasons out. I just got done watching season two. Um, It starts off in season one. They're talking about... uh, uh, oh gosh, this is the terrible thing about recording is that I I can't just Google everything real quick. I know, it's a sad um Marcos, uh, the the big the the big drug lord guy that was down in Colombia. Oh, um, ah, jeez, the guy who dug the tunnels. No, uh, uh, Noriega. No. no, gosh, Noriega was a different situation. This, I, I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Anyway, continue. No, I have to. I have you to, have to Google. Yeah, he has I to have Google to, this. I have to look it up now. So now because, he has to look this up. Well, I know because the there's people the watching this saying, yeah. "You, you, idiot, how could you not is... remember that? Have you guys ever heard of transitional? Uh, what, what's the, see now? It's happening to me. It's infectious. It's happening to everyone. I bet you at home are forgetting something too. <laughs> but you know what's awesome about what? Google is that I can just Pablo Escobar. Pablo Ugh. Escobar. That's so bad. How come every time I hear his name, I think of an ice cream sandwich? 
That's so cool. anyway, you, but you know what's awesome about Google is that you can see on here. I wish I could hold this up to the camera that I just I just hastily typed in nonsense. Drug Lord Columbia. Well, no, it's it's Drug Lord Ib Columba Nakos okay, because I good. didn't I typed it. So terrible. Pablo Escobar, continue. Uh, so anyway, so yes. uh, the the show starts off in season one talking about uh, uh, about fighting against Pablo Escobar and sure. his in his uh, drug cartel, uh, the Cali drug cartel, I think. And and so the point being is is that this is hearkening back to uh, combating South American drug trade. This isn't to say I mean there could be, but the, this isn't to say that there are Coast Guard ships off the coast of like Florida right. or Virginia or California yeah. that are that are conducting mm-hmm. you know secret prison type operations. Sure. Sure. But I think it's more just the chilling effect of for one, what are we doing? Like why? If you can find in the Constitution where they specifically wrote, because the whole point of the Constitution was that the powers were few and defined. Right. It's very specific it what the government is for. So if you can find the part of the Constitution that says, oh, and by the way, we'll use our Navy or Coast Guard to have secret prisons outside of federal jurisdiction where we can house drug criminals. If you can find that, let me know. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it's not in there. No. And, and and don't even come at me with a with a general wel- welfare or, or defense no. or anything no. like that. No, this is ridiculous. No, it, you know this is this is a humanitarian thing. Yeah, it, mean, it, it, it know, exactly. It, uh, and I mean, we're not even hundred percent sure that everybody they're pulling out of the water is actually a drug dealer anyway. Some yeah. of them could be immigrants. Some of them could be, you know. Any number of situations. So, who knows? <clears throat> and then again, it could be fake news. You know what sucks though what? is that I was going to click on that link about Al Franken, and, and uh-huh. now there's a different breaking news story. Yeah, and it's it's really too much trouble right now in the middle of doing the show. Yeah, to go to back even and look go for the other there thing. is a whole other yeah. topic, and that one is huge. We're huge. not. Yeah, we're not. We're not even going to talk about what it's showing. Trust me, you're hearing about it right now. It's we'll get there. One we thing that Blake there. and I have discussed, and it's an interesting thing about doing a show like this for for anybody listening at home, anyone who's thought about starting a blog or doing their own show if 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 there's one piece of advice i can give you it's this it's that if there's something that's if one of the concerns you have about maybe adding your own thoughts to the the twitter sphere or or blogosphere or what have you is that well i don't know if i'll i don't know if i'll have enough to discuss or to write about or you know i don't want it to be stale and always write about the same thing or what have you you'd be surprised (laughs) you'd be surprised because if if there's anything that we've found, it's that every week when we come in here to do a show, if if we did a show on a Wednesday, then yeah, maybe on Thursday or Friday, the the wheels are kind of turning of, oh, I wonder what we're going to talk about next week. I don't know yet. Yeah. But by the time we get around to the next Tuesday, Wednesday, so much stuff has happened in this crazy <laughs> you world. You can't even pick and choose. Yeah. It's like... That, yeah. We're not even covering a fraction of the things oh, that man. go on in this country. Yeah. Which is why we're trying to stick to that that specific point of the view of the libertarian. And it's just, I mean, you wouldn't believe this stuff. I mean, it's just, just watch the news for five minutes and it's like you're getting pot shots taken at you just from all different angles. It's it's crazy. Yeah. I've never lived in a time in my entire life where so much calamity was going on all at once. And you know, honestly, I think it's because we just have access to more information. You know, I mean, back in the day, there must have been the same amount of stuff going on in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s. But but it's like we just didn't know it because it just didn't get to us, you know? You're completely right. But I, I just have to stop you there real quick to say, you know you know how you know you're getting older? How? When, when you say back in the day and people start to wonder when that is. Ooh, because because you just said back in the day, and wow. I immediately started thinking: Does he what mean? Day was that? Does he mean like two thousand four? <laughs> does he mean nineteen ninety six? No, I mean nineteen eighty six. Does he mean seventy five? I mean when does Reagan he, was does president. Sixty eight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I just I am forty three years old, going on forty four. Okay. I'm a lot older than I look. No, no, no. Yeah, no. You're 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 forty. <laughs> you're forty two, going on going on twenty nine. Going on sixteen. Yeah. Fourteen. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I you know I'm thirty two, and and I'm not one of these people. I didn't. It's not like I've had a really hard time with getting older per se. Because it's more that you just live your life. Yeah. But one of those interesting things that I've noticed, especially when you're talking about serious issues, especially when you're discussing them with totally different types of people all around the country, all around the world, from different backgrounds and all that, is that 
when I was younger, I thought about different people's perspective as in where they were from and uh, their maybe economic background, social background, racial, yeah. you know, you know, heritage or what have you. Sure. As you get older, you start to in, to identify more with their age as well as being yeah. part of the things that identify oh, yeah. who they are and where their opinions come from. Sure. I mean, age has a lot to do with it. I mean, where you grew up at the time you grew up yeah. has a lot to do with your point of view. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, and, and, and the only reason I brought that up at all is that you, you, you said that, that, that phrase back in the day. And, and it's, and it's true is that when you're talking to different people and you say back in the day, if I say back in the day, because I'm thinking about my childhood, I'm going to think of late eighties and nineties. Yeah. That's my, back in the yeah. day. I could talk to somebody else and their back in the day is the 70s and for and, and by the time you were in the late 80s or 90s they're already living an adult life and they're not yeah. thinking about sure they're not thinking about pop culture and you know what have you. And so I, I don't know we this is so many weird segues. I know. We've we talked about we've talked about football in this episode. <laughs> we've talked about getting older and the value of wisdom. <laughs> This has been a really. Strange, this has been a strange. Stay tuned, episode. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We have half an hour left. God knows where we're going to go with this. <laughs> well, I can I can tell you that we have we we have to we have to have like, like cue cards of how to do segues. Yeah. Well, you know, I can tell you where we're going to go with this, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> go there, man. Go there. <laughs> ABC, ABC News. ABC this, this, News. this just happened. This, this, this happened this past weekend or the start of this week. Okay. ABC, ABC News makes an epic mistake and retracts a bombshell Flynn story. Uh, I'm, 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 Another I'm reading this. Mistake? I'm reading this off of Zero Hedge, um, but, but this is actually coming to us from a, a different, uh, a yeah. different source, I believe. Well, uh, but anyway, <laughs> where are you going, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, so, uh, but anyway, the, uh, you might have seen in the news uh, Brian Ross. Brian Ross is one of the lead investigative journalists for ABC News. Sure, and he had kind of he he kind of released this just bombshell preview of an investigative report that they were doing. That was that was supposedly going to lead to the impeachment of President Trump, and and you know finally we can show a, a direct we have the smoking gun of his collusion with the Russians, and this is you know this is flagrantly unconstitutional or, right. or illegal, and, and so on and so forth. And and he and in his report he was saying that uh, that Mike Flynn. Uh, was getting ready to test that he he had flipped. He right. was going to work with the with the investigators, and he was getting ready to testify that Donald Trump had colluded with the Russians before the end of the election. Therefore, he had actually reached out to Russian sources, and they were working together to undermine the election. Bombshell news. Because the Russians are what caused me to vote for Trump. Yes, a- absolutely. We the, the Russians make us. The do Russians things. made me do it. Yeah. Uh oh. That's okay. So, yeah, no. you can hear audio. So, so, so Michael Flynn, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, or this was the report by by Brian Ross that that Flynn had flipped. He was going to testify that uh, Trump had colluded prior to being elected president. Well, then they uh, scrolling back up here to the top of the article. Uh, you know how you know how these news organizations do is that if they report something that's incorrect, then when they when they inevitably first first of all they may not do a retraction at all. They just right. say, oh well, may I call and forget all about yeah. it. Or if they do a retraction, it's kind of like a bottom of page thirteen C <laughs> is yeah. oh by the way our headline news story <laughs> that was tweeted a million times was right actually wrong. The obituaries, yeah, <laughs> yeah, is so so they finally determined that not only did that not take place that the only thing he did prior to being elected was just sharing his platform thoughts with with his staff that he wanted to reach out to the Russians in order to open diplomatic chan- channels and ease tensions in the event that he becomes the next president sure. which is totally normal there's right. there's nothing out of sure. out of the ordinary with that and then the first time that he actually instructed someone in his employ to actually speak to a Russian official Official was after he had won the right. election. Okay, and so once again, that's that's a hundred percent normal. That's yeah. typical transition of power. Sure. Then why is everybody making such a big deal about this? So, well, they're making a big deal about it because you have people like Brian Ross coming out and saying, "Aha, we, you know, here we've got you. This is the this is the smoking gun." Uh, and if it is a smoking gun, and they did well, do this, 
How did that change the way people look at the world? I mean, well, people voted for Trump because Hillary was nuts. Well, the point being is, is that they're, <laughs> they're they're making all this to do that <laughs> he, one option or the other. That's it, guys. You know. Well, they're making the to do that he colluded with the Russians in order to get elected. But we find out now that he didn't he didn't okay. communicate with the Russians still, until after I, he I had gotten elected. I still would like an answer as to how the Russians influenced <clears throat> me to vote for him. Well, that's that's not even that's neither here nor there. I mean, it, that's who cares? That, that's neither here nor there because the. Point Point being is, is that he did not do that. Yeah, he and didn't. They made a report like during rush hour on on national news that he did. We have the evidence. Here comes the report. Yeah. Only to then have to run a retraction six hours later, we saying were wrong. So, well, I mean, we just yeah. it was just a flat out lie. Yeah. It was just I mean, call it call a spade a spade. It was a flat out lie. Uh, and, gotta, and you know what's crazy about it? Anything, anything that involves Donald Trump, because I'm not a Donald Trump fan. Uh, he's, he's, yeah. a, he's a terrible. Pre- they're all terrible presidents. Like, <laughs> like, like there should be. We got it. We have to work on our where there's like disclaimers running across sure. the bottom of the screen of they're all terrible. If no, that's I make the point of this, yeah. Thing. If 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 I'm attacking your guy today, uh-huh. it's because he's terrible. But all, everyone's terrible. They're yeah, all bad. I'm not offended by that. Yeah, they're all they're all bad. <laughs> but but the the thing is about Donald Trump is is that you know he's got this combative relationship with mainstream media right and and you know that of course you know we have our, our like our fake new, hashtag fake news it's yeah. like that should be like the dictionary word of the year or phrase yeah. of the year it it's should gonna be, be fake should, news wasn't it time uh, magazine that does a word of the year well, I know they One do. Of them does. Yeah, I know they do. Person yeah. of the year. I, yeah. I, I thought like like Merriam-Webster dictionary does yeah. like the word of the year. Yeah. But fake news has got to be the thing of the year, right? Um, and just but just the simple fact that he already has this really combative relationship with media, uh-huh. and you're a member of the media, and you would love nothing more than to nail this guy. Sure, but when oh, you all fuming, yeah. But when you <laughs> give him in. When you give him more ammunition against you by actually reporting fake news, I mean All it's a hundred percent shoot yourself yes. in the foot. It's I mean that's let's let's really not let's not stand yeah, let's not dance around it. It absolutely was fake yeah. news. Yeah. And 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 from what I understand, Brian Ross has been uh has been uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's he's been suspended. Okay. Uh, for a period of time, I, I don't know how long his suspension is going to last, but he has been suspended by ABC News. And it was Brian Ross's story that he yeah he's their lead crafted, investigative right. I mean, well, he's their lead investigative journalist. To make sure that he's not being a scapegoat for somebody else's goofiness. Well, you know, and 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 this is where I could ask you about this because you you have a lot more of a professional history yeah. in in professional media than I do. Yeah. I'm I'm one of these alternative media. T- full hat. I'm Alex Jones, okay. crackpot people. You are a free agent to do what yeah, you wish. Yeah, I'm a free agent. That's that's what I prefer. As long we'll as that neutrality allows but, you to. But you have a history in working in, in, in professional media. Sure. Even even if I were some hotshot investigative reporter, uh-huh. surely they're not literally just going to let me stand in front of a camera and read off of my own script and no one's read it. Depends. And, and no one... Like, surely other people involved in ABC News saw his work had read what he was doing and just and kind of like a newspaper editor thinking, should we yeah. run the story? Should we not run the story? There is How always, should... there's always an executive producer. There's always a producer. There's always somebody over yeah. the reporters to make sure that the stories that are coming across their desks are legit. Yeah. You know, so if somebody comes across with a totally blatant fake thing and then somebody above them approves it to go to air, they're all liable. Yeah. Okay, because you know you can you can have you can have a reporter off in left field doing something completely irresponsible, but if the executive producer, or the person who chooses for that to go ahead and go on air, agrees with them, then you've got two idiots in there. So I mean, you know, well, that and I mean that's the reason why I want to kind of ask your opinion on this one is that you you already you already made the made the statement is that well is he the guy 100% responsible or is he a scapegoat i have no doubt he's a, he's responsible i just have a hard time believing to what degree is he responsible yeah, I have, that's the question because if somebody yeah. approved that story to go across thing and they actually knew it was fake then he's involved in a 
you know, he's involved in pushing yeah. a certain agenda that is held by that group of people. Yeah. I I have never worked in major media, and this isn't even this isn't even like local news. This was yeah. national ABC this is big news. Stuff. This is yeah. one of the this, big three networks. Yeah, I, yeah. I have a hard time believing that only Brian Ross was involved in in he getting, wasn't. in putting this on air. No. A live breaking yeah, news for the whole country to he see. He can't be. And and nobody there said, well, let's make sure we've got our ducks in a row because this is big news. Yeah. And then, of course, obviously, it's just 100% uncategorically false. Yeah. Uh, it is fake news by every definition. So I, I saw somebody on Facebook, they made the analogy of, this is the same thing as me running a breaking news report at noon today saying, uh, Trump has nuked the whole world. Uh-huh. And then running a retraction six hours later, actually, he just microwaved his lunch. I mean, it's it was <laughs> that'd be a great story yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. Especially the part about him microwaving his lunch. Yeah, I'm really excited. I don't about see that. him as a guy who eats a lot of microwavable. No, I don't. I don't know. He is president. I mean, when are you going to eat? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Jeez, you ever if those if, poor guys get if I had the if I had the kind of money that Donald Trump has, you know, I'd like to sit here and think, well, I would just eat filet mignon. Had. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, if I, he's I would, a billion he's he's a billion short of where he was when he walked in. But I can tell you for certain I wouldn't I wouldn't have run for president. I uh, I promise yeah. you that. I wouldn't yeah. want to be president. Uh but but anyway, oh. just to kind of put the put the exclamation mark on that is that I just I when you already have that combative relationship between the administration and the media and when you already have growing numbers of Americans who are starting to get their Information from alternative sources because yeah. they're losing faith in mainstream news. Yeah, and then you have a situation like this. You would think that mainstream news would step up and work harder to try to tell the truth, to be honest, mm-hmm. to be forthcoming, and to not try to spin stuff in a certain direction because that's how they feel. That's not what news is about. That's yeah. not what. That's not what people work hard to become reporters mm-hmm. to do. If that's what they're doing, then they're failing themselves and they're failing everyone. Well, I mean, the the for me the it's obvious just the ethics yeah, in it, man. For me the obvious answer is is that, you know, I wouldn't expect to be employed at my local newspaper, you know, in Columbia yeah. if I was just making up stories and well not necessarily that the whole story's made up but I interpret it in exactly the way that fits my narrative and it's a, and it's just absolutely pro- proven false yeah. and and just unashamedly putting that out there I wouldn't expect to make it very far as a journalist and no. so then when a, when a lead investigative reporter from one of the big 3 major news outlets can do exactly what I just said exactly and and I mean and not get away with it because he didn't get away with no, it because he he, he, he it. is he is in hot water and I and I have read reports that that the brass at ABC are yeah. are none too pleased <laughs> with. Well, I can tell you this: if I was a reporter in his shoes and I was doing a story like that, and they were kind of pushing me in a certain direction to do it, I would have in the back of my head, man, if this goes south, I'm the goat. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that's going to take the fall, not the not the brass behind the desk. You mm-hmm. know, nobody's going to see those people, but they see me on TV, and I'm the one that's going to wind up looking like an idiot. But, you know, it's that balance between do I please my bosses or do I follow my own heart in this? I don't know where he stands on it. I don't know if he was 100% behind supporting what he was saying. I don't know that. All mm-hmm. I know is people trust these networks. People trust the news. They got their hearts set that these people are telling you the truth. When they're not telling you the truth and they're telling you lies, who can you believe anymore? That's why we're all going to alternative news because we, we're just not sure who to believe. Who you can believe is is Alan Mosley. Yeah, we can at, believe at Alan Mosley. <laughs> at the gold standard, that's right. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. It's just, that's, it's just it's well, shameful. It's disgusting. But there's, it's, it's just going on and on yeah. and on. And it's, you wonder why there's such controversy between Trump and the media. Well... <laughs> All they do is lambast him all day long. Don't even give the guy a chance. Well, if if I if I if I wanted to put a bow on that particular topic, it's that people do do ask me from time to time that well, well, smart Alec. They use a different word than Alec, but we'll say well, smart Alec. Where do you get your news then? If you feel so uh, disenfranchised with with news networks and mainstream media, media. Mm-hmm. and and my answer to them is is that I everywhere yeah. is that I and and I and I still look to to I mean we I mean on this show we try to use a variety of different sources 
Uh, I don't. I don't. I try my best not to read anything on the show that is untrue or misleading in any way. But we also try to get stuff. We we get some stuff from alternative media. Uh, but I mean, USA Today is a big source, and we used USA Today. Yeah. Uh, already today. I mean, we've we've used articles from the New York Times, even though I'm not a big fan. Uh, you know, uh, CNN, Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS. Even the, there, even alternative sources. There's yeah. there's there's it's there's a from. lot of garbage out there, whether it's mainstream or otherwise. Mm-hmm. But what I th- I think one thing that's severely lacking in education in America that people are going to have to take upon themselves to do a better job of is be open and willing to get their news from a variety of sources, even ones that you feel may not uh, may not agree with you. You know, categorically, right? But you need to be able to determine for yourself what is rubbish and what is not, right? Um, and and you know, I, I I've uh, I, I I love watching the Jason Stapleton program, and everybody can check that out on on YouTube and in his website. But one of the things that I've heard Jason say on his show uh, is, if you ever want to do a neat little exercise in, in in news media, is the next time there's a big some random big story. You know, go sit and watch like an hour's worth the because you know how all the 24-hour news cycle yeah. is nowadays. Go watch an hour of coverage on some major breaking story, like on Fox. Yeah, and then turn the channel to CNN, and then and then spend the next hour watching that exact same news story on CNN, yeah. and then go spend like an hour watching it on ABC or NBC. Yeah, or what you'll have notice you. that the way of you'll, looking you'll, at the yeah, same story yes. is completely. You'll, you'll notice how how different. different it's portrayed, um, you know, the the seriousness or intensity may be different, yeah. and 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 that's not to say that any one is right or or wrong, or maybe they're all wrong. Uh, it's just it's just simply to point out that you have to recognize that it's a thing. You have yeah. to recognize that that nowadays genuine journalists are at an all time low, and people with an agenda are at an all time high. Exactly. And we can't really do anything about that other than not support their networks. But right. there's millions of people out there. But what you can do is. You know, is devour as much information you can from as many different sources and make educated judgments for your yourself. Own, yeah, make your own yeah. decision. Watch all of them, see the different angles, and come up to your own opinion. Yeah, because that's really what it's all about in the end, anyways. How you particularly feel about it versus the way they're telling you to think. Yeah. So exactly. don't be a puppet, man. You know. Don't don't be a puppet. Don't man. be a puppet, man. Yeah. Puppet man. Don't yeah, just I mean you know take right, your sources. Right and then I just pull I just I envisioned you with like dreadlocks and the in the skull cap and say don't be a puppet man, like I don't know. I need to get one of those. Yeah, that would look better, wouldn't it? I'm actually proud of you for not saying anything about my hair being in a. In a I think you look good. Well, thank you. You look really good. I just I just had this I had this sinking feel. I'm just it's better to just get things out there. I had yeah. this sinking feeling that Blake's going to say something about. I was going to jump all over your yeah. man bun. Yeah, he's, no. no, 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 no. We don't use that phrase. Okay. We don't say we don't say that phrase. Why? Uh, God, I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't like it. Okay. I don't like that phrase. <laughs> I just I just don't I just I'm not don't insulting you. I just don't I just don't like it. That's but just I how will it is. tell you this: with long hair as awesome as yours, you ought to be rocking that out, yo. Well, you know what the problem is, <laughs> is that I, I get really tired of, of constantly having to like do yeah. this number. So anyway, no, I totally understand the reason why dudes shave their heads. I get it. Mm-hmm. I mean, getting up in the morning, you know, I have greasy hair. You know, greasy hair is just not a good thing. It's really bad, and so I have to take a shower every freaking day because of it. Hmm. I know you didn't want to go there, but you know, hmm. being able to pull your hair back and look awesome, you rock it. This is one of those moments where you look over and you and you're checking to see if we're recording because we already we already lost the American Ply fl- flute reference uh, in in a previous. I recording. promise you, yeah. I will figure out how to work that back in yeah. one day. <laughs> Please. <don't. laughs> so so one more story before we get to um, our our favorite new segment yes. is the meme of the week. Oh boy! <laughs> but we've got we've got one more quick one thing more. to Let's address before the meme of the week. Yes, sir. Uh, tying in back to the beginning of the show, we've talked about drug war follies. Speaking of drug war follies, uh, we just passed uh, at the time of this recording. We're we're a little bit beyond it right now. Okay. Uh, but December fifth. 
December 5th was an anniversary. Do you know what it was the anniversary of? Without looking, even though you've already looked. Okay, I'm not looking. <laughs> I don't know. Uh. December 5th, 1933 is the uh, anniversary of the end of Prohibition. Oh, okay, wow. The end of Prohibition in the United States, alcohol Prohibition yeah. in the United States. You know, it's funny, when, when you say Prohibition, or the or in this case, ending Prohibition, people know what that means. Yeah. You're, you're talking about alcohol, alcohol Prohibition. Sure. And, yeah. But in the early 1900s. But you... The the further we go, the more you do have to specify we're talking about alcohol prohibition. We're talking about drinking. Right, because Be- the word prohibition in general could mean anything. Yeah, because we have a prohibition on a variety of substances today. Yeah. And, and the reason I wanted to bring that up today, uh, other than the fact that we did just pass the anniversary um, – uh, so that was the ratification of the 21st Amendment, which right. repealed the 18th Amendment, which was the amendment that prohibited uh, alcohol consumption in the United right. States. Um, you know, we could do a whole episode on just the historical narrative of that time and how it got passed. I know economist Milton Friedman would say it's the only the only way they got it passed was because all the men were off fighting in World War One. Yeah, uh, and the, so that's how they were able to pass alcohol <clears throat> right. prohibition. And then when they all came back home, they wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of it. Um, but I, the reason I wanted to bring that up is, you know, we were talking about the drug war, and we've talked about pot, and you know, yeah. and, and and you know, and and I know that's a big topic in America today. Yeah. Is different states are legalizing marijuana, or at the very least, medical yeah. marijuana. And and there's so, quite a few that have, as a matter and fact. quite a few that have. Yeah. Uh, and of course, our official stance as libertarians is is that if you if you believe in the non aggression principle and you believe in self ownership right. and you believe in property rights, then people have the right to consume or not consume whatever they want as long as they're not hurting anyone else. It's their own business. Exactly. And so we would I would be against all drug prohibition. Period. Full stop. Right. And 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 don't even don't even come at me with the yeah. But Alan, what about cocaine? Or yeah, Alan, what about heroin? Or I yeah, won't. Alan, I what won't. about meth? <laughs> well, no, because because if if there's if there's one thing that I love about libertarianism, it's that we don't just make policy decisions willy nilly the way the wind is blowing on every single individual issue. Right. It's you have principles. It, yeah. we, most people don't nowadays, but you have <laughs> principles, and when you and when you have principles that you genuinely believe in and live by, those can be very much guiding factors towards your ideas on different policy and whatnot. Exactly. It's not a matter of whether or not you like something. It's just whether or not you believe that you have the right to point a gun at someone and say they can or can't do something. Right. And I don't believe basically you ever do as right. long as long as someone's life is not in, endangered yeah as long as they're not endangering well, someone basic else human rights yeah, yeah then then you have you never have yeah. a right to coerce people sure um even e- if that's via law yeah so and so <laughs> the, the reason why i wanted to bring up this today in the anniversary of the 21st amendment and repeal of alcohol prohibition is that is it's it's just the principled it's the constitutional argument in in so much that how is it that in not even a hundred years ago, it was just understood. It was just an accepted understanding of government and politics and law that if you wanted to prohibit a substance, that you could not pass that law. There was no justification for it. So the only way you could was to amend the Constitution in order for the Constitution to 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 have that in in codified that 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 was something that was allowable for the federal government to. To, do. to put on to the states or the people, and and that's what they did, and I, and it was definitely wrong, and it was definitely immoral. But it, but they, at least they went through the effort of going by what our founding fathers suggested, which was going through the constitutional process, and then they also did the constitutional process to undo yeah. this unjust law. <laughs> uh, but the point being is is that there's all sorts of substances that are prohibited today. But there are no constitutional amendments prohibiting them. Right. It's it's uh, federal bureaucracies that pass regulations that then serve de facto as laws that then say you can't have these things, and then and then we beget these uh, massive expenditures in law enforcement. We beget things like the war on drugs. Um, it's 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 just it's it's a sobering reminder of how the political narrative can change in such a way that what was understood as the right and proper way to govern 
is not is no longer the case today right. and no law was passed nothing changed the constitution remains as it is mm-hmm. and yet the way it is put into use the way it is interpreted and enforced is totally different right and that is an inherent weakness. That's yeah. an inherent weakness with the system. That's an inherent weakness in the Constitution. It's an inherent weakness in the state as we know it. That if if the state if the state is is supposed to be limited in in its enforcement by a certain set of rules, and then it can it 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 interprets its own rules against itself, and then it determines that it no longer has to listen to those rules and can write new rules for itself. Yeah. Then it's meaningless. Right. I mean, it makes it, no sense. It, you know, I've I've used I've used the uh, the argument before. You know, everyone's heard the old cliche, "You can't fight city hall." Well, why do people say you can't fight city hall? Because if you're going to go up against city hall, what you're really saying is, is I was wronged by the state, uh-huh. so I'm going to sue the state. And argue to the state that the state was wrong, and really hope the state determines that the state was wrong. You got an uphill battle to climb. You do, yeah. And so, when all of those chips are in are in are in one corner, when all those eggs are in the same basket, when when they're when they're interpreting the law, when they're writing the laws, and even the laws that are meant to. Uh, meant to define their influence, then they're able to interpret their own rules against them. It's yeah. it's pointless. It's pointless, which leads us to the meme of the week. Da, 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 da. I know. I oh, love boy. it. I love it. It's the meme of the week. Not oh, that one. Okay. This right. one right here. Are we ready? So since we've talked okay. about since we talked about uh, the Constitution and the drug war and how interpretation has changed and the and the and the rules have changed in such a way. That it, it kind of feels hopeless in some yeah. ways. It leads us to today's meme of the week, and there it is. This is the Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, <laughs> from the movie Inception meme. Uh, the Constitution was designed to limit government. Well, it doesn't. So now what? <laughs> and that's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> well, it doesn't. Yeah, so now, now what? what? <laughs> Well, and 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 what do we do? I, yeah, I mean <laughs> I don't that know. that's that's funny, and I like that meme, but it also really drives home the point of an anarchist or an anarcho-capitalist uh-huh. like myself is that for for when people say to me, "How can you how can you identify as that? How can you be? You know, we have to have some kind of a state. We have to have laws, and we have to have enforcement of different things. You know, who would build the roads, and who would you know who would defend us, and so on and so forth. Is that yeah? But your the, the your entire world, the, the entire American worldview for a state is a constitutional republic. Uh-huh. And, and the whole idea is, is that you have a constitution where, as, as Madison wrote, the powers of the government are few and defined. And that this, yeah. this, this, this document is meant to expressly determine what those powers are and, and to make sure that it never oversteps its bounds. Right. And that, that didn't work. I mean, for for lack of a better way to put it, and, and and we might have said this on a previous episode, is that one of two things must have happened: either it was always intended to become a bloated, excessive government. In that case, it was immoral and unjust, and should have never the Constitution should have never been ratified in the first place. Or it wasn't intended to be that way. It was intended to be limited, uh-huh. and and it just managed to not be so. And in that case, the the Constitution failed. But I don't, I don't interpret it any other way. It either it either was immoral and unjust to begin with because it, it got us to where we are, or it failed to prevent us getting to where we are, and in that case, it was a failure. I tend to lean towards the latter. You tend to lean towards it was meant to be better than this, but it got yeah. poisoned to this yeah, point. Yeah, that, that tends to be my point of view of it. I think... <sighs> I don't know. I, I kind of. I mean, uh, I, I, mean I, I, I can't see how the founding fathers had the foresight to say we're going to write these down, but we're going to design them to fail. I, I just don't well, think that was their intent. I, I will say this: this, this, when when we finally get around I, in the new year, and it's something we've discussed in in prepping for the show, and it's something that we maybe discussed early on in the show, is that. Uh, our, our weekly episodes talk about current events and news and maybe just kind of off-kilter topics we want to discuss from a libertarian perspective. But we occasionally want to do some bonus episodes where we really get into the weeds of some uh-huh. of a historical topic. Sure. And one and an episode that we absolutely can do in the future is talk about the uh, constitutional ratifying conventions uh-huh. and the people who wrote the Constitution, who interpreted the Constitution as it was being written. Right. 
and who dis, who debated ratifying the Constitution in the constitutional ratifying conventions, and 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 the reason I bring that up is is that I would say you're you're right and you're wrong. You're right in the sense that absolutely most founding fathers, most most people who helped draft or and who ratified the Constitution would say absolutely it was meant to be a document that limited the power and scope of the federal government right. and, and to understand that it was made by the states for the states. It, it, it did not – the states preceded – the federal government, right. not the it's, other way around. Yeah. It, they created it, and they could also unmake it. Yes, right. Um, but I will also argue that there were absolutely elements at the time. There were Alexander abs- <coughs> Hamilton. <coughs> there were absolutely people at the time who were just chomping at the bit to start whacking away with an axe the moment it was passed. Right there, I mean, there were absolutely people who who were scheming for ways to interpret, to undermine, and to enforce in their own worldview the moment it was ratified. There absolutely were. Yeah. I mean, it's... Sure. It, absolutely there were. And in, in, in the handful of first presidents that we had in the United States, uh, you know, people like to idolize... Uh, some of the early presidents, they like to idolize a George Washington or a John uh, Adams or, yeah. or Thomas Jefferson, and, I, yeah. and I'm a fan of a Jefferson. Yeah. But I mean, even even in those early years of the Republic, there were already things, there were already you know ac- executive acts being done and legislation being passed, and seeds that being were planted, yeah, that, that were very what yeah, this is today, yeah, that were very unpopular, yeah. that were considered unjust or immoral or unconstitutional from the very beginning. And even if most of them were being struck down then, the uh-huh. fact of the matter was is people were already pushing that agenda from day one. Yeah. So 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 the answer is it's both. It yeah. it was both never meant to be that way, but it also there were people planning to undermine it from the get go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you expect? What do you expect? Yeah, well, that's I, by gosh, I people expect people. I expect to be competing for SEC championships every year. <laughs> that's what I expect. <laughs> You know, I'm really more of a Boise State fan, so I, I only even talk about UT because we're I went from to Tennessee. a tech school. Okay, we didn't ah. have a football team. Okay, that's why I don't really ah. seem to be too into that sort of thing. Ah. And as far as I'm concerned, the NFL is so bad right now with so much politics. I don't even see the football anymore. All I see is Callan Kaepernick's hairdo and him kneeling. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, the NFL is blowed out. Okay, and I mean, college ball's cool. Everybody's really into it. Maybe if I would have gone to one of those schools, I'd care. But, you know, I just, you know, football's all right. It's fun to watch. You know, it's good to go to a game, eat a hot dog, get get upset about somebody you care about losing. But, hey. Yes. Yes. I think that'll do it for for this for this uh, episode of the Gold Standard. You know, wow. I I can't decide if the longer we do the show, if it gets more, if we're getting more zeroed in to a serious show, or if we're actually getting more just abject nonsense as we no, go along. I think we're getting zeroed in on stuff. I think it's pretty cool. We're just two guys talking about yeah. the news, man, and that's what this is about. You know. Well, I think it's both right. I yeah. think we I think we intended to get zeroed in yes. as we went along. Yes. But what actually happened is is we were undermining the show <laughs> from day one. <laughs> I don't think we're undermining the show. No, no, no. No, we're no not. man. No, I think it's pretty good. I mean you know, your your opinions and your points of views are are brilliant as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, I'd never heard of libertarianism before you came along in my life. And honestly, I mean, it's it's fascinating to see the way you see the world and how different it is from the way I see the world. And, you know, we, we the can things do, I learned from you are just, you know, they're amazing. We can do a whole – well, first of all, thank you for saying that, yeah. although although you're insane. You shouldn't listen to me. I'm no, crazy. No, it's cool. I mean – I'm an insane person. You shouldn't you listen know, to me. You know, you actually made anarchy make sense to someone who thought that that was crazy. If, I mean, that's just madness. When you say anarchy, I see a bunch of guys you think around Molotov burning down buildings and, you and, know, yeah. just destroying the world, you know, yeah. a bunch of crazy people, but you're right. Well, I mean, the, the, the only thing that makes me sad about what you just said is the fact that if you had never heard about these principles or these or this ideology before I came along, why? Because it just isn't something I was exposed to. I mean, Why? you know, you had your Democrat or you had your Republican. You had your liberal or you had your, your conservative. There wasn't a, a middle ground. There wasn't something that defined 
Okay, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, my whole life I've always thought about it. Like, I like to be the guy on the fence. That way I can see what's going on on both sides. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And, I mean, the, the thing about the libertarian point of view is that, you know, really not so much that you're the guy on the fence, but you really do kind of have a good feel of what's going on on both sides. And, you know, there's a balance there. It's There's a logic. Well, you know, it's not so extreme to one way or the other. And hey, this world does not need any more extreme. Well, you know what? What's funny is is that is that our opponents would say we're extreme. That's what they would I say. Is that they would say we're as extreme. somebody who's been pretty conservative his whole life and very right. I mean, I don't see libertarianism as being, you know, extreme at all. Well, I mean, that's great, you know. And, but that's and, also because I've been hanging out with you. Yeah, so. you've been hanging out with me. <laughs> well, it, what 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 I was gonna say, what I was gonna say was is as we as we discussed earlier is that when you ha- when you have principles that you live by that you truly believe in, then having a position on a variety of topics becomes much less complicated. Yeah. Number one, and number two, in my opinion, it's easy to be a libertarian because when everybody else is so wrong about everything, then we can just we can just bash everyone and it's just <laughs> nonstop attack, attack, attack. But we have to. We have to because who else will? Right. Um I think that's a, I think yeah, that's good for today. That's good. So that's good. Uh, once again, I want to remind everybody, you know, join the conversation with us. Uh, join our Facebook group, which you can find at facebook.com slash TGS Alan Mosley. That's right. where I, I like to repost things and 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 write little blurbs from time to time. And in anybody that has any uh, comments or suggestions or or ideas for topics or something yeah, they want to hear us know. talk about, absolutely join the conversation. Uh, if you enjoy our show and you want to support us because you want to continue to see us in a nice studio with cool equipment talking about neat things with our with our neat little technology here <laughs> and you don't want to just see me talking into a can with a string out right. behind the dumpster yeah. then su- then think about supporting the show at our Patreon page which is patreon.com slash TGS Alan Mosley so I think that'll do it yeah that's a wrap that's a wrap thank you ladies and gentlemen we'll see you next time thanks for joining us <laughs>